Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with MTI Wireless Edge. Today's host is Ofer Bismuth. He is their Director of Sales and Marketing for North America. Ofer will be presenting today, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to submit them in the question box, and I'll ask them of Ofer at the end of today's presentation. Ofer, I'm finished for now. Thank you so much for your time and being with us today. You can go ahead and take it on over. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning and uh, good evening from Israel. <laughs> uh, my name is Ofer. I'm uh, almost 12 years with MTI, uh, specific uh, for North America. So uh, this is a agenda about uh, our uh, short uh, presentation. Uh, I will show you uh, why there is a huge amount of uh, uh, demand for uh, capacity, which leads very clearly to a better technology, better antenna, and why you need a better antenna. We'll do a very short introduction about MTI. You will see that it's very short. Uh, the main idea is more technical. Uh, I will go over some consideration about antenna selection, and we will be open Till tomorrow for question and discussion. Of course, anything uh, which will be uh, uh, offline uh, question, we, we will be more than happy to answer via microcom. So go ahead. So the question is uh, demand for capacity. The question if you need uh, a network like this or network that show like this, uh, it's very clear. So we, we I call it uh, instead of demand, starving for capacity because everyone understands today, and I will show you that more and more capacity are requirement for each of us. Even I'm very <laughs> conservative about uh, application, still uh, going picture, video, online, everything. So, so what 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 is going around? And everyone is. I'm sure that everyone understands the situation that there is a a, a combination between. Uh, you know, in one side location, in one side uh, application, and both of them increase dramatically uh, the requirement for uh, for uh, data. You know, like large event, uh, live streaming. I'm sure that if you go to one of the show, the all you know the live show, you saw almost everyone uh, picking the the mobile and try to uh, uh, to do uh, you know. Um, some kind of uh, uh, streaming and 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 I will, and and by the way most of the big event uh, they are doing some kind of uh, uh, offloading to the Wi-Fi so, or they have some connection uh, you know backbone connection which is wireless but again uh, we will see that uh, that uh, these both uh, direction are combined together with the new technology so. So this is the reason that there is a huge amount of demand for capacity, and it's 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 very clear that the cap the technology must support it. So we hear about the MIMO two by two, now everyone talking about four by four, and uh, the new AX talking about eight by eight. So the the complexity of radio, which has more streaming over the air or more port. Uh, it's very clear that you need uh, a better antenna technology, okay? And what what does it mean a good quality antenna? Why do you need it? Uh, let's leave it, you know, in the... It's a question that you need to think uh, um, that you will see in the end of the, the, the presentation why uh, it's very important to, you know, for it. So what's happened? So uh, now everyone is uh, talking about, you know, AC, Wave 2, and everyone, everyone that we talk with them now today, they are in the middle of process or, or the end of the process to move into uh, AX, uh, 11AX. Uh, it's very clear that I will show you the, the difference. Uh, new technology like, uh, you know, 80 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz now, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking only about point-to-point. -point. I'm talking about technology that has point-to-multi-point in 60 gigahertz, again, in, in order to increase the capacity. And 
20, 28 gigahertz as well, it's also for point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint. Uh, some company have also technology. Trying to understand this kind of uh, giga or M-wave technology for point-to-multipoint. Again, the main idea is to support, to support more capacity, maybe in the backbone, maybe in the backhaul or something like that. But again, the technology must support the demand or the starving for. And we have also kind of smart tech antenna technology that I will explain a little bit about this. More and more companies are moving like uh, Radwin, Cambion, uh, other company uh, uh, technology, and, and, and it's very close to LTE, so we will talk about this. Uh, we have fixed LTE. I'm sure that you heard about company like Nokia, uh, ZTE, uh, Bicel, and other companies that have some kind of LTE. Uh, TV white space as well is very uh, hot, uh, you know, subject now in the U.S. I will explain a little bit. And CBRS, you know, it's also technology in 3.5. The main, again, the main idea is to to give more and more capacity. And what's happened that on top of the main uh, region for capacity, we have also demand in the rural area, and we will speak, speak about this. More and more people in the rural area now need more connection, even to their machine, to their, uh, you know, online, uh, you know, selling. Uh, we're talking about area that doesn't have even, uh, uh, you know, cellular coverage. So we will see that uh, the demand for capacity is growing uh, all over the, you know, all over the the state. So uh, if you look about the the, the the comparison between AC and AC Wave 2, you will see that you got some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of, sorry, wait a minute, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, 3.5 gigabit uh, per second compared to uh, 1.3. And if we look about the AX, you know, compared to AC, I'm talking about Wave 2, you can see it dramatically uh, growing in uh, capacity. And this is the, the reason that most of the company like Aruba, uh, even company like uh, Redline, Radwin, everyone is going to this technology. And as you can see, uh, you have uh, 2.4 or 5, it's dual band, okay, in order to get... Uh, in order to get, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, it's, okay, sorry. Uh, so uh, this is the technology AX. It's leading to a huge amount of uh, of capacity to support again the area. Uh, um, we talk about uh, two by two, three by three. Uh, now it's very clear that the AX talking about eight by eight, uh, and 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 for for sure you need a better antenna technology. You cannot use the same technology today because we will talk about this. The more streaming over the air, the more capacity. I will go back for, for just show you, this is 1024 QAM modulation with a lot of bit errors. So you must have a better antenna technology. And the funny thing, uh, the antenna, it's kind of the eye and the ear of the, the network, okay? Um, so if you have a very good, you know, sensor like the antenna, you have much better, uh, you know, throughput. And we will show about this uh, very closely in, uh, uh, when we are uh, going forward with the presentation. So this is the, this is, if you see here, for example, uh, from, uh, it's an example from Xeros, now it's Riverbed, you, you will see that on the same footprint, you, you increase the, the capacity of the radio and the antenna and everything. It must be. It must be a better antenna technology, and of course, it's lead also to kind of who is the who is the the company uh, that are doing the antenna uh, because the quality. Um, what, what is it? What it means, smart antenna? Okay, uh, because we saw that there is a huge demand. Uh, the smart antenna try to focus uh, on specific uh, condition in order to adapt you know, the throughput to a customer, okay, kind of LTE, something like that. So what's happened that, uh, you know, in order to achieve a better capacity and coverage, and of course, to, to get a better bit rate and link quality and less interference, uh, there is a, a, a technology that allow the antenna 
uh, to follow uh, the customer that need the capacity, okay? So they change accordingly to the throughput or the lead from the customer. So it's, of course, it's, 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 it's a combination of element of the antenna, kind of combine, combined dividing network, which change the element, uh, you know, per the, the situation. And the control unit, mostly it's kind of active uh, solution that uh, either it's on the antenna or the radio. Try to understand that it's kind of gun when you need the subject to uh, direct to the subject. Uh, you focus the subject, you know, you don't shoot uh, around, okay? It's same idea. So we have three uh, different uh, kind of, again, uh, types, okay? We have the stupid one. I will show you the beam forming. It's just a switching lob. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, no one uh, is following these. Uh, most of them are doing direction of arrival. It means that once they recognize uh, a customer or, you know, a signal from uh, from uh, specific customer that try to adjust or to adapt uh, the pattern according to this direction. So we have dynamically, we have adaptive. Uh, the main idea, if you can see, this is the switching lob, the simple one, you switch a lob everywhere. Uh, the dynamically, it's more interesting because it can, uh, you know, uh, change the phase array based on the direction, you know. And the most, uh, most uh, you know, r r recently technology is the adaptive array, which means that uh, they follow the customer and they leave, you know, the interference uh, and so on. So, again, this technology try to increase the capacity on the same um, given, uh, you know, chunk of frequency, okay? It's very popular. You will see this in, uh, in uh, Radwin. You will see this in... Uh, in Cambion, you know, the Medusa, uh, you will see this in many other technology. It's going more and more because the main idea, by the way, Mimosa also are using this. So the main idea is to achieve much better uh, performance from the same situation. And of course, this is more smarter antenna that uh, you need to build. So we will talk about a little bit about the CBRS. Uh, I'm sure that everyone heard about the CDN, the Citizens uh, Broadband Radio Service. Finally, it's the final stage, and I hope that in the next quarter we will see more and more pilot, more and more customer. So the main idea that they took the 3. Point, uh, uh, giga spectrum and they built a kind of LTE best services. Okay, uh, the main uh, it was used before by the U.S. Navy and other uh, federal. Uh, you know, uh, um, um, entity. So what's happened? Most of the major cellular carrier and the giant cable trying to push inside and get a chunk of it. And all, even Qualcomm, Nokia, Intel, Google, everyone trying to be part of this, uh, uh, of, of this uh, story because it's, it can give you much more capacity with a lot, a lot of range, okay? Uh, the beautiful in CBRS is the share spectrum assignment. You have a server called SAS, which get the requirement from uh, from the field. He check according to the database. He calculate and give. Uh, he he is allocate. You know the service is allocated the the kind of uh, the spectrum and what is the requirement. Once it's finished, uh, the spectrum. Uh, you know the channel is free to be used again. Again, this is a very try to understand. There is a thing. Two or three major company that build uh, uh, a huge database that uh, support all of this uh, process. Uh, the idea is that 3.5 can achieve a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, range and near line of sight, and and it's very low cost for many operator operator because. It's a new uh, chunk, and everyone wants to be part of it, and instead of, you know, the lenses that they don't have today. So CBRS, you will see more and more, uh, uh, you know, I think next uh, next quarter, June or July. Also, there is a lot of uh, buzzer of TV white space. Again, the main idea to use all the spectrum to give more and more capacity. Uh, and this specific area, uh, this specific uh let's say, uh, uh, frequency, it's more effective for rural market, okay? So it's not a lot of capacity like the 3.5, but it's give you much more uh, coverage. So TV white space, it's, uh, 
it's around for a long time. The main idea that they want to use the space between the TV channel. Uh, the big, 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 uh, you know, uh, push is coming from Microsoft. They uh, they have an ecosystem called Airband uh, program. They uh, finance uh, the, the, the equipment. They finance the development. They push the radio vendor. Uh, they fix the prices. The main idea that they want to take some you know, uh, some bucks, uh, once you go uh, to service, they want to take some bucks for, for the link. But again, the money, of, it's not the issue. The, the issue that there is a huge giant that pushed this kind of program, and we saw the result in the market, more and more customers getting more and more uh, interest in this. Um, again, it's controlled, the same idea by SaaS database, uh, the same idea. Uh, it's very perfect for uh, even low line of sight, not uh, near line of sight. And uh, try to see the range. And most of the, I, I will not talk about the, the business model, but there is a very clear business model for TBY space. And uh, we develop also very uh, few antenna for this uh, market very in the last uh, six uh, months. So it's also, again, the main idea to get to push uh, capacity to the field. Um, MTI is a lot of uh, MIMO, you know, in, in different frequency. Uh, we develop also in TV wide space, uh, different kind of polarization. There is a huge difference between VNH and dual slant. I will talk about this after that. And of course, uh, for both the directional CP and sector antenna. So you can see uh, more. So for example, this antenna we sell to uh, one company that are uh, using uh, AX, uh, they have uh, dual band, as you can see, 4x4, four four, each port can be uh, both 2.5 and uh, 5.8, uh, so very, very nice antenna, very small uh, and very cost effective. So I will be back to uh, uh, to technical, uh, give me a few, uh, few minutes to talk about MTI. So MTI, it's a leadership in over 24 years for Antenna, you can see everywhere MTI. Uh, I will show you after that our, uh, uh, let's say, uh, our, uh, uh, you know, um, part of our, uh, let's say, OEM. Uh, we are very strong with OEM, which means that uh, each OEM is, uh, you know, thousands of antenna and even more than uh, 10,000 a year sometimes per, per per part number. Okay, we're talking a few, a few, uh, a few of them. So we design and production high quality antenna solution. This is our niche. Uh, we don't want to be cheap. We don't want to be, uh, you know, low cost. We try to be uh, reasonable price, and this is the reason that uh, we open a manufacturer in India, which owned by MTI, in order to reduce cost. And we are doing this very, uh, very, uh, very clear. And MTI, if you look in the market, it's very, uh, you know, it's a follow name or nickname to quality. And quality means performance in antenna. Uh, and the funny thing that antenna, if you check the, the, you know, if you go to a product and you see a project, sorry, and you see the site acquisition, the site installation and design and cable and radio and power and everything, the antenna is about two or three, even less uh, percent of the total project. And it's very important, you know. I will show you if you choose if you choose the wrong antenna, all the network that you build can be 50% of the capacity. So again, low cost, very low cost, uh, you know, very uh, sorry, uh, small portion of your uh, network in the cost, and but give you much more eff uh, effectively. And I will show you after that. So this is MTI. Why it doesn't move? Okay, sorry. Uh, MTI has uh, two uh, business models. One of them is the defense market. We have a lot, a lot of uh, projects from submarine up to Air Force. And we have the commercial market. Uh, we have uh, RFID as well, a lot of product in RFID. Very strong also in OEM in RFID. Uh, let's say most of the major RFID uh, radio are working with MTI. Uh, we use uh, our antenna used for point-to-point, point, uh, point to multi tone of course, uh, broadband, TV wide space, different, ki different kind of application like trackside. You will see a lot of trackside uh, in uh, you know in uh, the rail, uh, mobility, LTE, back small and more. 
In general, I give you a little bit about how antenna it's look inside. Just give you, you know, it's not it's not a big deal. Okay, you will see it's not a big deal, but the big deal is to design uh, the right antenna with the most efficiency and of course the, quali the quality of uh, the product. So we have here the Redom. We call it the Redom, which is a kind of plastic, but it's very uh, unique plastic. Uh, it's uh, you know sun, uh, you know sun protection and. Uh, you know a lot of other things that it's uh, it's very specific material which is outdoor so it's not a regular uh, uh, plastic we have the gasket which gives us uh, ip67 to the antenna you know waterproof uh, we have uh, the built-in pcb which we designed of course with a lot of special everything we have the ground which is critical for two things for one is to uh, transmit forward the, the info the you know the, the radio uh, the pattern and the second one to be uh, good enough in order to install it outside, you know, because it's uh, you need to install it wind load and, uh, and uh, a lot of things, and of course the connector, which here you can see two port MIMO two by two. So this is in general the antenna. About MTI, we have a lot of kind of base station uh, antenna, subscriber, Omni, uh, different kind of enclosure, all the frequency that you hear. See, I'm not going to go over it. But we have a lot, a lot of portfolio. Of course, between uh, we can, you can have a lot of uh, combination between frequency sometimes, a dual band, triple band, and so on. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, dish antenna portfolio uh, in uh, two foot parabolic, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, in 3.5 uh, and 4, 5.8 as well. Uh, 80 gigahertz and 60 gigahertz. A lot of information is going now in. We call it dual band. A lot, a lot, a lot of uh, company, tier one company, going to have a dual band like a one dish antenna in two foot that contain 80 gigahertz and 18 or 80 and 23. The main idea to have dual band is to have two a uh, large link on the same two foot uh, antenna. We have a very nice uh, integrated solution of antenna enclosure. You know, you can put your own solution with the antenna. This is the new one, which is more flexible in uh, in installing, uh, you know, your uh, your equipment. The main idea that we build the enclosure, it's not to sell the enclosure, it's to sell the antenna that, you know, uh, cover the enclosure, IP67, and you can use the antenna in very short without a cable. So this is the main idea. Of course, this is the RJ45. So a lot of people asking how much it cost me. I will show you that this is the wrong question. No, how much it cost it cost me. You need to choose how much it's the network performance going to be after I will choose the antenna. So the question everyone understand how much it costs you uh to install this network, for example, or you will see more picture about installation uh uh, some of them are very uh, tough. Some of them, are, you know, see the, the antenna here, see the antenna here, and the antenna here from MTI. Uh, different kind of installation. So how much it costs you to install this kind of stuff? You know, uh, you can see antenna here. So how much it costs you to install this? Okay. Uh, everyone understand that uh, that. Uh, it's thousand of it, okay? So how much it costs you to reinstall again the antenna if you choose the wrong antenna? So my question to uh, a lot of customers is you need to pay, if you choose the wrong antenna, thousand of US dollar compared to few additional. You know, our product are almost better in price or equal to price or a little bit uh, expensive than the other one, but Again, the performance that we give, it's much more than the other one. So this is the idea. You need to think uh, about um, low cost, you know, low cost of the, uh, sorry, a low portion of your uh, total network. I need to put a little bit more uh, US dollar in order to get 1,000 free. Otherwise, you need to make the reinstallation again. So we will talk about uh, the antenna parameter. A little bit. Uh, so frequency, it's very clear. The band, the gain, it's very clear. Everyone understands, you know, what is the gain. Of course, there is a lot of, uh, you know, buzzer here. Uh, maximum gain, minimum gain, average gain. So you need to take the minimum gain. It means that at least I will get this gain, okay? 
a lot of uh, you know data she said average gain or maximum gain but it doesn't say anything if you need to plan your uh, network you need the minimum uh, being with off power it's very clear for sector or even for uh, cpe uh you know off the power of the the antenna is going uh, to to a specific uh, you know if it's uh, 30 or 60 degree or something like that we will talk about this parameter and i will show you how much it's critical uh to get information about this, uh, those. So let's go for the side log. Okay, for each uh, antenna, whatever will be the antenna, uh, there is the main lobe, okay? So I will just close. There is the main lobe and the side lobe. Okay, it's me, it might be that there will be no uh, very, uh, you know, very, the number of side lobe will be very small or very, uh, you know, Something, but always you have a, a side lobe, always. Okay, so what's happened? If the side lobe is very big, okay, or very uh, strong, okay, you are going to have a lot of interference from adjustant uh, sector, and it can reduce your capacity by almost 50% if you have a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, uh, you have a higher uh, side lobe. So we have uh, first side lobe, second side lobe, third side lobe, and even more. So the ratio between the main lobe and the first, you know, side lobe, you get some kind of, we call it uh, side lobe uh, suppression. Okay, it must be a very, uh, very, you know, uh, you know, a very, uh, um, uh, the, the ratio is going to, it must be a very high in order to get uh, a better performance because when the ratio is very high, it means that the main lobe is very, uh, very strong. And the side lobe is, you know, designed uh, correctly, okay? Because this is, by the way, this is a design of antenna, okay? It's a main basic of antenna. So you need to check what is the side lobe, okay? The second parameter that I can see, uh, show you, uh, it's, uh, it's the front-to-back ratio. The main idea from the main lobe and the back lobe, okay? Always there is a back lobe, always. As again, the higher ratio, it's called front-to-back ratio. The higher ratio, the better of the performance. If you want to do uh, a frequency reuse or back to back uh, with uh, with uh, other, uh, you know, with other sector, sometimes you know you are not the only one in the tower, so there is a lot of interference from the back side. Okay, so you need a better uh, back ratio. Uh, so a lot uh, again, a lot of interference, uh, increase uh, single to noise. Uh, and, and bottom line, de decrease the capacity for sure, and capacity and coverage. So also a very important uh, parameter is the front-to-back ratio. The last one we talk about MIMO 2x2, 4x4, 8x8. Uh, in order to differentiate it between streaming, you must to take uh, different uh, polarization, okay? So there is a lot of parameter like uh, cross polarization and port-to-port -port isolation that give you more, uh, let's say, more space between to polarization, you must check what is the cross polarization. The higher the cross polarization ratio, you get a better uh, performance because you have a lot of space between, uh, you know, VNH, dual schlang. So this is the only way to increase uh, the streaming uh, to play with the polarization, and this is the reason that you need a better antenna design uh, between uh, those uh, streaming. Of course, environment is critical, although it's not a direct, okay? But uh, even 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 ice, snow, salt spray, uh, humidity, uh, vibration, uh, you know, some kind like wind load, you know, sometimes the, if you don't have the right bracket, the wind load is very strong, so you, you know, your antenna is going to be shake and so on, so the network is not going to work. Uh, so again, environment is very critical, and most of our antenna, uh, we are testing a very tough environment because it's outdoor, you know, and this is the reason that we gave three years warranty for the antenna. A lot of, uh, by the way, company playing with the uh, with the environment because it's they, you know, they try to save man, uh, money on uh, on the quality of the product. So this is kind of resulting from, uh, you know, from you know from 
the right antenna compared to wrong antenna. Okay, it's kind of uh, if you take three sides, you will see that a good antenna give you a better coverage, a better capacity, and of course better ROI because in this uh, scenario you need to put at least another maybe two, three different sector, which means more money. Okay, so what's happen if you choose the wrong antenna or you make the wrong calculation? You will see how much it's going to hurt you. You know, coverage, throughput. Sometimes you you do need to do reinstallation, redesign. Not mention the time consuming customer. You know, charming it's living because uh, lower and blah 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 everything. And this is the real uh, real. Uh, uh, network that uh, I will show you that from a customer, you know, we cut it from a customer. So this is was using the the antenna that was supplied by uh, by Cambion, okay, the 60 degree dual pole. And and what's happened if they they do the same the same you know the same antenna uh, design but with MTI, sorry, the same network design with MTI uh, antenna, you will see how much dramatically. It's improved, first of all, the capacity, the coverage, and also uh, you can see uh, how much it's very, very, give you a lot of, uh, you know, coverage. So this is a real, real network that now, a red, sorry, network that working today, thousands of antenna of MTI bought for this, uh, for the 60 degree uh, antenna. To be honest, before the, 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 the beam forming the Medusa, it's coming from Cambion, but you will see how much dramatically it's to choose the right antenna. And this is the real network uh, design. Again, quality is an issue. So how much it costs? Again, it's it's. I think it's not the real question. Okay, you need to check what kind of performance I get, uh, what of kind of uh, quality, ROI, and cost of benefit. You know, to check. So this is example of a little bit of short of our, uh, let's say, uh, our uh, OEM. You know, like Riverbed, which uh, we we uh, have a network. You know. It's, they bought zeros, and we are part of uh, zeros uh, portfolio. Aruba, which bought uh, by the HP, Radwin, of course, Nokia, Cambion, Proxim, Uber, Zunel. Uh, we have also Siemens, Mimosa. You, you name it. Again, you name it. Uh, we are here. Okay, there are thousands, really thousands of OEM that you don't know. They are working. Okay, like Six Harmonic in Ottawa, uh, Blink that you uh, hear more and more about them. So again, this is. This is the, uh, again. This is part of the portfolio of that we perform. Uh, we offer to a commercial, uh, you know, OEM, not including RFID, not including uh, 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 the, you know, the military. Again, the main idea that they choose MTI because they can know that they can get a quality uh, for thousand of antenna, the same performance. Uh, with a very reasonable price and, of course, logistic operation. It's uh, very strong uh, support and everything. So this is MTI. Um, you know, we uh, we know how to do quality, 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 which means performance, and we try to do the best and uh, for this market. Thank you. Ofer, thank you so much for that fantastic presentation. We enjoyed it. And I do have some questions here for you. Are you ready for a couple of them for us? <laughs> yeah, I hope that uh, we'll oh, answer fantastic. this. fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. We'll get started with the first one. Um, can you tell us how many users are able to connect per each antenna? Oh, it's very, uh, it's a very tough question. It depends on... on uh, on the frequency, okay. Uh, it depends on the technology, okay. Because if you go to AC, from AC to AX, of course you increase the number of user. Uh, for example, the TV white space, uh, they're talking about 15 or 13. In 5.8, it might be higher. So it depends on uh, the technology and uh, and the area, you know. And of course, the frequency. The frequency is critical if you can support more uh, for demand, but. Uh, for sure, uh, I can tell you that uh, that uh, uh, some company, uh, WIS company, are upgrading all the time the technology in order to support more user with more capacity. So every, anything between 15 to 50. 
per, per sector, by the way. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, you mentioned the military. Can you tell us about, um, uh, does MTI see a majority of your business within the military? Obviously, you you work with lots of different companies, and we we're just, in, this question is regarding um, how much work do you do with the military? It's uh, it's very uh, depend on, uh, you know, because it's per project, but I assume it's about 50%. By the way, MTI, it's a public company, so all the results are uh, listed in, uh, in uh, you know, the stock exchange in UK. So you can see all the results of MTI. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, next question here for you. Um, are there any paid subscriptions required for any of MTI's support? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, can you repeat the question? Of course. Um, are there any paid subscriptions required for um, the MTI support? <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, wait a minute. Sure. <clears throat> um, I try. The antenna is a... Uh, is, um, passive component, so there is no tax support 24 hours a day, but uh, mostly if the customers say, I have a problem with antenna, mostly we go forward and we replace the antenna. Thank you, Ofer. I'm going to go ahead and, and here's uh, just a few more questions. Um, if a customer needs any assistance um, on link calculations, um, does MTI offer tools to assist with that? <clears throat> Mostly, uh, we support uh, the input for the for the tools, you know, like Excel file or other uh, format. In general, most of the customer have a kind of uh, tooling, and they need uh, the input for the antenna. So we give them all the information, and they know how to embed the information inside the tooling. So we don't support tooling but we support the database for this tooling in different format. Excellent, thank you, Ofer. Next question, um, if, a, if a customer uh, reaches out to Microcom and they need support with some uh, equipment and we might need to contact MTI, is the best way to contact you for uh, some support would be to email you? Uh, you know, there is a, there is always a, a way that they can go either to your website or our website, and there is a contact. So we always try to answer in uh, in the next 24 hours, uh, mostly. So yeah, you can go either via Microcom or direct via the web and get uh, all the support for sure. Excellent, thank you. Uh, last question: um, Can you tell us about where uh, your products are manufactured? As I mentioned, uh, we are not manufacturing in China. Okay, the lead. Uh, we we decided in day one uh, in order to reduce cost, and I mentioned this to go to India. Okay, uh, we have a huge manufacturer in India today. It's a kind of tax uh, zone uh, free area in Kuchin, and uh, the, the CEO is Israeli guy that we are, we are relocated because, you know, the mentality and the process and the quality and everything. So we have a, a huge manufacturer in India owned by MTI, fully owned by MTI, almost, I think, 98% of uh, this manufacture. But we do production also in Israel for... Uh, for design, uh, for prototype, for sample, for low, uh, low. Uh, let's say, if we have a low rate antenna, we still product making the production in Israel. I don't want to speak about the process, but uh, in general, our target is always to push it to India because the cost. Thank you for that, Ofer. That makes sense. And um, the the fact that, you know, you have all your manufacturing in, in one place is very good. And, and you did mention specifically that it's not uh, manufactured in China. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, one last question. Does MTI offer any type of courses that one could be involved with? Courses about uh, your products? Uh, my, my, Microcom uh, is offering uh, uh, training <laughs> so we can work via Microcom. In general, in general uh, uh, we give uh, free training for customers if they need. Uh, we don't mind to come to any uh, place that they need uh, any uh, kind of presentation. So in general, it's not a formal training, but uh, informal. We are visiting customer every uh, six weeks uh, all around the U.S. and Canada. So either Excellent. you can do Thank the you. presentation, we support you, no problem. Yeah. So yes, Microcom could take some training, and then of course customers could either come to us, and then uh, perhaps even even you know log into your website and see what they can find out there as well. Yeah. Thank you, Oprah, so much for answering all of those questions for us, and thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. And if anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any products mentioned or shown today, uh, please visit us at www.microcom.us. And if um, please remember that this webinar presentation has been recorded, and we will upload it to our YouTube channel so you can view it again. Thank you, Oprah, for your time. We still very much appreciate it today. Thank Have you. a fantastic day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.